Uh, let me tell you a story. It was around 1 o'clock in the morning. Uh, the phone rings. It was the phone of a man named Dr. Leo Winters. He's a highly acclaimed surgeon. He quickly wakes up. He picks up his phone and he hears that there's been an accident. A horrible accident. And his skillful, this doctor's skillful hands were needed. He quickly jumps out of bed, takes the quickest route to the hospital, right through downtown. A serious, a horrible route to take, who's going through the worst sections of town. But he realized that he needed to get to the hospital as fast as possible, so he risked it. He went right through downtown, and as he sat at one of the red lights, He wasn't paying attention when all of a sudden somebody rips open his door, grabs him, starts pulling him out of the car. The man had on a gray hat, kind of a dirty flannel shirt, saying, get out of your car, I need your car now. And he's like, you don't understand. I'm on my way to the... And before he could finish it, he was thrown out of the car. The guy takes off in his car. The doctor, of course, just laying there on the side of the road, you know, dusts himself off and takes some time before he gets a taxi to take him as fast as possible to the hospital. Took about an hour before he could get to the hospital, and sadly, he hears that 30 minutes ago, the patient passed away. The nurse told him that the father of the person who fell or passed away was hanging out there, crying there in the chapel. So the doctor wanted to explain what happened, runs to the chapel, walks in the door, and he sees a man there crying. But he notices that he had a a gray hat on. And then he saw that he had a dirty flannel shirt on. The man didn't even realize. That he ripped out of a car the person who could have saved his son. In our world, countless people are tragically pushing away the one that can save them. Save them from the penalty, from the power of sin. Countless people are too busy for the one, the one who can deliver them. They can't find time, seem to find the time for the one who can redeem them from Their sin, life could be so different if so many of them would just find the time for the one, make time for the one, and that one's name is Jesus Christ. You know, when the angel announced the birth of the Savior, he declared to Joseph in Matthew 1, 21, he said, she, talking about Mary, she will bear a son and shall call his name Jesus. And what does it say? For he will save his people from their sin. Paul takes it a step further in the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 121. It's Paul says that we have redemption. But how do we have redemption? Through what do we have redemption? It is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Tonight is the Super Bowl which I invite you all back at 6 o'clock. And if you're like me, you care more about the food. I'm excited about the game, let's be honest, but I care about the food. I'm Baptist, come on. But tonight, these two teams will battle it out. Blood and sweat will be poured on that field, right? But this morning, we are gathered to talk about something far more important than a football game. Far more important, far greater than the blood of mere men. This morning we're going to focus on the blood of Jesus Christ. This is your first time with us, or maybe you haven't been here for a while. We're going through a study on the book of Hebrews. and Our series is titled, Jesus is Greater. Over the past few months we've seen that Jesus is greater than the angels. Jesus is greater than Moses. Jesus is greater than any other prophet. Jesus is greater than any of those Old Testament Saints, Jesus is greater than any priest or priesthood. He's greater than any covenant. And while the first half of Hebrews chapter 9, where we are this morning, while the first half of that 
book or chapter talks about how Jesus is the greater tabernacle. This morning, we're going to focus on just one simple verse, and we're going to see the fact that Jesus' blood is greater. Did you know blood is one of the most vital parts of your body? Moses himself said that the life of the flesh is in the blood. You know, the first thing that the doctor does when you go to the hospital, he feels the pulse. The pulse of what? The pulse of your blood. You know, there's nothing in man more precious than his blood. And this verse we're going to focus on, the one verse we're going to focus on this morning, near the end of Hebrews chapter 9, it's chapter 9, verse 22, our verse for the morning says this. It says, in fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood and without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness you see that without the shedding of blood there's no forgiveness blood sacrifices happened all the time throughout the old testament and here in the book of hebrews here we see it is the blood of jesus that purifies us but does that make sense to any of you does that make sense this morning how can blood clean something when i was little when i would go outside and play i'd skin my knee when i go outside maybe get playing in the woods get caught by thorns now some of you young kids don't understand that you're you you know you do this more now got your video games you don't understand playing outside go out you need to ask some of the anybody 30 and up they'll explain what it means to play um but you get you get blood stains i don't remember ever going home and my mom being excited, oh, good, the stain is blood. Yes. I, I just don't remember that. That stain will come out easy. I, I never heard that. The blood is difficult to get out of clothes. Blood stains, right? But for some reason, the Bible says that blood is the most powerful cleansing agent in the world. God created blood to be a cleansing agent. Some of the nurses, doctors here can tell you that blood takes oxygen as well as other supplies to your cells. And it removes waste and impurity from the cells. Literally, blood cleans the filth out of your body. Do you know that? That's one of the main responsibilities of blood is to clean, or one major problem or things with blood is to clean your body, to clean the blood. There's no other cleansing agent known to man that can purify your body like blood can and in the same way there's no other cleansing agent known to man that can cleanse your soul of the filth of the shame than the blood of jesus you see blood was designed by god to be used to forgive us of our sins back in the old testament during the annual celebration known as passover an innocent lamb was slaughtered the blood picture this was painted on the door frame you picture that literally blood painted on the door dripping everywhere painted on the door frame why it reminded them of when death passed over them why because it saw the innocent blood But this isn't the first time we see this. You have to go back to the book of Genesis. You have to go back to the third chapter in the Bible. There in the Garden of Eden, if you know me, I love talking about this topic. There in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, the first humans, they sinned. They sinned who or where against God. They disobeyed him. The fellowship now is severed. It is broken. They realized, for the first time ever, they realized they were naked. So they sewed. They made coverings for themselves. A little while later... God's walking, Adam, looking around, you know. Adam, Eve, where are you? Calling out to them. What are they doing? They're hiding. They're in shame. They're hiding. Adam, Eve, where are you? God reaches out to them and they start talking. And he sees that they have coverings on now. He knows, obviously, he's God. He knows something's different. So he says, who told you that you were naked? And as you read the story, do you know what happens there? Maybe you, we miss out on this part a lot. It says God created 
God made a sacrifice, made a coverings for them. Well, how could God make coverings for them? You know how? He found a lamb, an innocent, spotless lamb. God himself kills a lamb to make coverings or clothes for them. And can you just picture that scene? Adam and Eve, they have no clue. They don't understand it, all the symbolism, the irony that's happening there. They don't even get it. It's going over their heads as Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the holy, blameless Lamb of God, is killing a lamb for the first sins ever. And he had to have been thinking, this is going to be me very soon. Way back before the nation of Israel, this innocent lamb shed his innocent blood because of the sins of man. Moses says in Leviticus 17, 11, I hit on this a minute ago, says, for the life of a creature is in the blood, and I have given it to you to make atonement for yourselves on the altar. It is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. Throughout the Old Testament, blood is constantly seen. It constantly reminds the people that a price has to be paid. Back in the Old Testament, every time you sinned, or every time a person sinned, they were required to give a sacrifice, a blood sacrifice. And can you imagine, any time you walk by the altar, the line of people there with an animal, an animal that doesn't have any clue what's about to happen, by the way, innocently standing there. Can you just picture that altar almost at any time? The blood, I know that's gross, but just picture the blood everywhere from sacrifice after sacrifice after sacrifice, day in, day out. And each sacrifice, the payment was life. The payment was the blood of an innocent animal. Why? Because a price had to be paid for sin. These goats, bulls, lambs, whatever it was, They had no tie to what was happening here. They were just owned by someone who committed a sin. There's nothing powerful. You need to understand there's nothing powerful in the blood of these animals that would offer them forgiveness. Hebrews 10, the next chapter, it says this. It says, it's impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Their their blood can't pay the price for us. They can't forgive anybody. But what happens is God use the blood of these animals to help us realize, help them realize that one day there would come an ultimate sacrifice that would remove, remove all our sin. He would be the ultimate sacrifice for all, and his name was Jesus Christ. First John chapter 1, 7 says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we will have fellowship with one another. And what does it say? And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. And so we come back again to the main point. The main thought is just one I want us to walk away with this morning. And that is that the blood of Jesus is greater. If you go a few ver- we're in Hebrews 9.22. It's one we're looking at. But if you go a few verses up, Hebrews 9.12 says he, talking about Jesus, he did not enter by means of the blood of goats and calves, but he entered the most holy place, once for all, by his own blood, having obtained eternal redemption. But what about if you go the other way? If you go down, you go to Hebrews chapter 9 again, verse 26. It says, but Jesus has appeared once for all at the culmination of the ages to do away with sin by the sacrifice of himself. Only the blood of God can cleanse my sins. Why? Because it is God that I offend. I'm sinning against God when I sin. Unlike what we see in the Old Testament. We're not sinning against lambs. We're not sinning against goats, bulls. We're not sinning against them. But now something's different. Now we see that only the blood of Jesus can cleanse us because only he has the power. Only he has the right to forgive us. You see, on one hand, on one side of the equation, you have the blood of bulls, goats, lambs. And then over here, on the other side, you have the blood of Jesus. The blood of the animals was offered. It was offered over and over and over again, while the blood of Christ was offered just once. Once 
for all, never to be repeated again. The blood of these animals, to me, from what I see, what I see in the Bible, seemed to be ineffective. Whatever was demonstrating, whatever was trying to pay for it wasn't working. At the best, this side is temporary. But ultimately, it was ineffective because they had to continue to do it over and over again. But then, on the other side, we have the blood of Jesus that was offered once and for all. That secured our chance for eternal redemption. You see, his blood was royal blood. He was, he is a king. His is pure and innocent blood, blood without spot or blemish. Jesus didn't give his blood freely as a martyr. No, Jesus gave his blood freely as our savior. Theologian A.W. Tozer once said, the atonement in Jesus Christ's blood is perfect. There isn't anything that can be added to it. It is spotless, impeccable, flawless. It is perfect as God is perfect. The sacrifices found in the Old Testament, they couldn't take away our sin. Those lambs, goats, bulls, and beyond, they were incapable of paying The price for our sin, despite the fact that they're picking them out. I'll take that lamb. They were unable to forgive sins. But thankfully, on the other side, God sent his son into this world to die for us. To shed his blood for us, to be our substitute, to be our sin bearer, to take our sins on himself. For him, he received the judgment that our sins, or we, deserved He was made sin. The Bible says he was made sin so that now I can be, we can be called the righteousness of God. This sinful man, I can be called the righteousness of God. Not because of anything I've done, but because he took of all my sin. Our sins are incurable. We are stained. We are helpless. Nothing but blood, as the Bible says, nothing but blood can set us free. And I want to encourage you, don't let the world outside fool you. I've been down that road. We've all been down that road. We've we've let it fool us before. Just because our culture, our world is becoming more wicked doesn't mean that God's view on sin has changed. Maybe just a little white lie that I commit or you commit. And the punishment for sin may vary. But that doesn't mean the payment for sin ever changes. You see, once again, nothing but blood can set us free blood must atone for us blood must cleanse us in other words life must be shed to redeem you and to redeem me and the only life that can redeem us for eternity is the very life and the very blood of the son of god and that's why we sing jesus paid it all what's amazing is it was once and for all and it's not just for one sin but for all sins it wasn't just for one age but for all age not just for a few But for all, for many, he was made sin for us. I wonder if you can imagine being at the hospital and a doctor. One doctor taking all the cancer, taking all the illnesses, taking all the pain, taking all the sicknesses, all on himself. That's what Jesus did. He was our propitiation, which is a fancy word of saying he was our payment. He was our sacrifice for all mankind. And when he died and rose again, he put away sin. The Greek word says that he annihilated it. When you make your last mortgage payment, some of you are smiling now. (laughs) When our church, two, three years ago, we made our last mortgage payment, we burned it. Remember at the park, we burned it. Oh, I think we tried. It kind of failed a little bit. But we did burn it eventually. The wind kept getting us. But when you make your last mortgage payment, like me, in 29 and a half years, when I make that last one, (laughs) thanks, and I burn it, it it turns into nothing, right? It disintegrates, right? It floats away. That's what Jesus did with your sin. It just was disintegrated. Not because of anything we've done, once again, but because of what he did. Because he paid it all. And now, it's gone. We hear in church the basic principle, the basic truth that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. And while it's a glorious truth, a glorious fact, it dies. We must dive so much deeper 
The blood of Jesus is so much deeper than that. You see, the blood of Jesus established a new covenant. We talked about that last week. The blood of Jesus purifies us. The blood of Jesus redeems us from slavery to sin. The blood of Jesus gives us life. The blood of Jesus justifies us against all accusers. The blood of Jesus reconciles us. The blood of Jesus gives us authority. It's so much more than just 100% man, 100% God dying on the cross. In our passage, we've seen the truth that God alone can pardon our sin. But let me explain that it's not without the shedding of blood. And I want to explain and show you that it's not just here. This is seen throughout the Bible. 1 John 1, 7, I just quoted that, says that man can be redeemed, but not without blood. Hebrews 10, the next chapter, 19 and 20, says heaven can be gained, but not without blood blood paul says colossians 1 20 says that peace can be enjoyed but it also says but not without blood romans 5 9 says salvation can be ours but it continues on saying but not without blood hebrews 13 12 sanctification which is a fancy word saying spiritual growth we can grow spiritually we can experience that but not without blood Revelation, John talks in Revelation 7, 14 and 15, says the glory of heaven can be ours. That sounds great, but if you read those passages, it's not without blood. A few people, or a lot of people really, throughout history, the French philosopher named Voltaire, President John Adams, and several other men and women throughout history used to criticize Christianity. They called it a bloody religion. All of its wars, all of its death, and they even said it even killed their founder. But over and over again today, we have seen that it's the blood of Jesus. That's what sets Christianity apart. To show they don't understand, they didn't get it. It's the blood of Jesus that makes us not a religion, but a relationship with who? The King of Kings. The only one who gave me, gave us, The very life. His very life. And then he rose again, defeating death on our behalf. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other founts I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. There is a fountain filled with blood. Drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And sinners plunge beneath that flood. Lose all their guilty stains. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood. Power in the blood. And let me leave you with one final question. And that question is, are you washed in the blood? In the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Let us pray. Father, this morning we have come. We come gathered as men, women, children. Sinners, Father, people who have made mistakes this week. And we come gathering as excited family. How exciting it was to hear Emma and Owen share, to see the slideshow, just to hear what God's doing in our youth program, Father. And once again, I pray it's been a morning, a morning of rejuvenation to once again be reminded, to once again hear about the blood that was shed for us, Father. Over and over again, we see that our blood can't work. Our blood doesn't work, Father. But your blood, your perfect, spotless, innocent blood was poured out, Father. It was shed for us, paying the price once and for all. Father, we are forever, we are eternally grateful in debt to you. We can't say thank you enough for what you have done for us. We will spend eternity thanking you, praising you, worshiping you. 
because only you, Father, are worthy. It's in your beautiful and it's in your holy name that we pray. Amen.